to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. What's up, Gabe? What's up? Yeah. What's up, dude? Yeah. I knew I'd hear that from you today. What? Sup? It's you. You said it to me. Nah, you're back on your bullshit now. What are you talking about? You're back on your bullshit. I mean, what's happening? Come on. We all know. We all know what's happening. Jamie, you know what's happening, right? She got famous. Yep. <laughs> she got fucking famous overnight. I am then, not famous. Blammo. Uh, doesn't blammo. want anything to do with us anymore. Little old me. What are you talking about? Oh, don't worry about it. I'm just, I'm missing my gray garden sister. (laughs) I'm just alone in the yard. Just because I set the time today and I have a hard out for the salon doesn't mean that I'm different. Um, So we want to start with uh, breaking down that last sentence you just said, okay? Sure. Seems normal I have a hard out, very Hollywood term. I I have to get out of the door. Mm Mm-hmm. For something very important mm-hmm. that you need to work around my schedule now. Mm-hmm. Salon. You're going to one now. What do you mean? What time does your limousine pick you up? <laughs> oh my gosh. Can we do that? Can you get, can you? I Jessie? don't know. You I don't let me know. know. Let so me know. For the audience at home who's listening and or watching on YouTube, Jesse's new show, Drinking Broettes, debuted. Is it is it debuted or is it debutted? It debutted uh, strong. I think it was a strong showing. Number you know what I mean? 36 in the entire world. That, and it's, you said too, like, it's becoming harder and harder to even get on the charts because of celebrity podcasts. Too many so famous people. So for me, 36, <laughs> I mean, it's not one. Let's be honest. Well, but to break it down for the audience, here, like, here's what it does mean. And, and, you know, to your point about the celebrities, Three slots ahead of you is Kate Hudson and her brother, Oliver Hudson. They have a podcast. Yeah. Sib- sibling revelry. They don't understand either that it needs to, so are they, needs to flow. Yeah, they're, they're reveling in their... In their siblingry? <laughs> Why wouldn't you just call it sibling rivalry? I mean, I, I, think it's taken. I keep seeing taken. it that way. Yep. I, I, got, I always thought it was sibling, sibling rivalry because I'm also dumb. And so... I was like, oh, that's a cool name. And then when I actually like looked at it and read it, I was yeah. like, oh, that's stupid as shit. That's the stupidest name I've ever heard. It's bad, but the sibling, sibling rivalry is taken. So what are you going to do? It doesn't, doesn't matter if it's taken. You could also use it. And if you're Kate Hudson and I mean, they, thankfully, they're, they're being nice maybe to the smaller yeah. podcast that's called Sibling Rivalry already. I would have done like Wine on the Hudson, you know? Wine on the Hudson? Yeah, just having a glass of wine on the Hudson. Ooh, thank God you're not picking the names for people, but like, yeah. Um, How about Suds and with Hudson? Yeah, yeah they're we'll all drinking beers sibling together. Sibling revelry. <laughs> <laughs> and then right ahead of you is the Atlanta rapper, T.I. Whose name I shall not speak. Yeah. Well, your hymen. I'm going to, after the show's over, I'm going to check your hymen. Ugh, what find a out creepist. If that's still intact. You know, I need to know it, Jabes. I need to know about cool. that hymen. Virus. <laughs> that's still one of the craziest stories. Craziest stories. I mean, of it, all time. Yeah. And we chatted about it on, on an episode, mm-hmm. but. Uh, it's his daughter. I mean, he's obviously not checking his wife's heard, hymen, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. He's, uh,. Taking his daughter to the gynecologist to make sure her hymen's intact, and that's that was mm-hmm. a real story. Mm-hmm. No, but I, I it, I'm unbelievably proud of you. That's fucking amazing, especially in today. Um, there was this we had a meeting last night uh, for the media company, and um, there's a stat that there is now over eight hundred thousand podcasts in existence. Yeah, you were number thirty six in the world. So that's crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, so. The show is really fucking funny. The, the response has been out of control. Yeah. I just, me personally, like, I just think it was time to hear two girls not give a fuck, but not in a whorish way where it's just like, hey, man, this is real life and here's what's going on. And uh, you know. here's the difference. Like, 
usually when girls get together like that, like call her daddy, for example, they're doing the show for guys. And I'm guessing they're the type of girls, too. Like if guys are around, Mm -hmm. they really that's when they come alive. Right. For us, we're actually doing the show for girls. So we're talking about things that guys would be like, oh, gross. You know what I mean? Like or that's not attract. Like we're not trying to be attractive. To guys, Tiffany we're not, pooped your pants in an episode already. Oh yeah, and describes it in detail, like yeah. how she got rid of it, how she woke up in it, how yeah. it felt. Like, so we're not trying to be sexy, and I think that's the difference, right? Like, we're not doing it for guys. And if guys listen again, and a lot have, and you're awesome, uh-huh. um, you know, there's going to be a couple that probably aren't for you, where you're like, okay, girls, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this one uh, on the table. But there might be some that are both fun and you might learn something about how your girlfriend thinks wife thinks fights you know all these things yeah i look i i enjoy it because <clears throat> like call her daddy's great uh and we love we're big fans of bar still uh both on drinking bros and here um but there it's just a different of course it's great sti- I mean, it's just a different style it's look at where it format. is on the charts <clears throat> those girls are blowing up and there is a place for that they yes. are young 100 percent girls just living their life and that's interesting right well, look a hot young girl is always interesting always but um and super that'll smart. never go out of style <laughs> super smart and intelligent yeah i don't know they're cool go out they're of cool style. but like i'm just yeah. saying, i'm just comparing where it's like it's just a little bit different like we're not trying to fill the space of call her daddy or the office ladies or anything like this i think it's just it's it's mainly for girls yeah and girls I, of like a certain age and a certain place in life where they are you know probably not you know going around and sleeping with every mm-hmm. swing and dick right yeah 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 and it's one of those things where you know we get compared because and that's the first thing that would, like they're gonna compare you to other shows we yeah, get compared like drinking both sports gets compared to barstool sports all the time for like the big cat show and all that stuff for sure like, Totally we love different, them, but, but it's just different. Totally different. Uh, and we love those guys. Shit, I'd be happy to go on their show. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's fun. It, it's been exciting last few days to see um, the growth of this. And, uh, man, I mean, you guys topped hundreds of thousands of views and our downloads in days. Yeah, I so mean, it's pretty, it's it's pretty, pretty exciting. And me and her, <laughs> uh, you know, or me and Tiffany Hart are texting back and forth just like oh my god and texting pictures of the charts and just like this is so amazing like this is we did not think i did not even think that we were going to get on the charts just because i know the landscape now Mm -hmm. um because i'm a podcast messiah expert (laughs) um so i was just like there's no way like sibling revelry (laughs) will, will bump me out right conan and will ferrell and all these people. Yeah, there's crazy, like there's no it? way that I'm gonna be able to be next to them, right? Might. But yar. Yar. I mean Yar. Shit. So you know. No yar. Yar. <laughs> um, no yar. Okay. Why a yar? Yar. <laughs> yar. Um, <laughs> no yar. <laughs> no, but it's it, it's been a blast and uh, yeah. I'm super proud of you. So Yeah, it but a, it is, you know, and it is company wide. So we all it's an effort of all of us here. Yes. You know, Jamie, you guys, the company, everything like y- making it happen. And uh Yeah, if it was just us by ourselves in a garage, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Right? Who knows? So we did we did get a lot of help and hopefully we just have a lot of people to yeah. make proud. I, I just I just want to say obviously that I don't want you to get out of line and let this go to your head. Uh-huh. I don't want to have to give you rap on the beak here on the show, you know? Yeah, you've already been saying a lot of stuff like that, like at yeah, home and yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. So yep. we're good. Yep. Uh You're like goes I up. need to go I need to go on a trip. I just need like laundry and oh <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, last night was the first. How does time that I... bacon taste that I'm bringing home? Blam! Yeah, no, I'm joking. I, I said to you, I go, uh, look, hand goes up, mouth goes shut. We said it a lot in our house, and usually you're quiet. Last night you weren't for the first time, and I was like, well, yeah, I'm just really like, you know, finding my voice, I'm able to like <laughs> talk back to you and stuff. <laughs> 
I think I may be able to get out soon if I get a <laughs> if I get a little bit of cash. No, um, not at all. Uh, Finally moved, moving out of Stockholm, yeah, and into a mm-hmm. real city. <laughs> I know my eyes are being opened. People are like, "Hey, girl, like you. Once you get your own stuff, like you can leave him. You don't have to." You don't have to put up with that. <laughs> you don't have to keep making videos and sending to your friends of just you banging pans together in Morse code, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's, exactly. Like, your Morse code is terrible. Nobody's ever understood well, you. Well, I don't... I learned it from YouTube, so it's like, I don't think it's right. <laughs> and I don't think any of my friends know it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like the people that you're sending it to also have to know. Sure. They just see you banging pots around yeah, the kitchen on the that's floor. that's all they see. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, I don't know. I hope you get your laundry done or whatever before your trip. And Same. I need a wife. Eesh. Uh, Eesh. No. <laughs> go to Drinking Bro at, uh on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere. Subscribe, rate it. They're fantastic. And also rate Ross Patterson Revolution. I've been ter- We've been terrible about that, about telling people to rate the show. I it helps. I just but we didn't need think to give... it mattered. And I, I don't know. know. I always felt like shit being like, hey, we already have 1.8 million listeners. Now I'm like, hey, fucking go write it. Put a five star on it. You know? Put whatever you want on it, but it's just the reviews help. They all do. And I didn't um, know that really. But we need to do, I think we need to do like a contest soon. Yeah, oh yeah. Of like the best review um, because they're really funny. Yes. Like we read all of ours for, for Drinking Broettes. Uh-huh. And they're just like, I don't know. They're funny. Yeah, yeah. That's all, it's great. So you could definitely do a competition of like the funniest <laughs> review or the weirdest. Yeah, or... for sure. For sure. Uh, I want to hop into The Bachelor, Jabes. Okay. Oof. Oof. Champagne gate. Yeah. That girl. The memes of going around on that girl exploding all over her face. It's like. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Spoiler alert, though. They keep spoiler alerting me on the previews. Like. For the people that are going to be around like, dude, for a I, long time. They, and they show the previews before the rose ceremony. So it's like, dude, okay, now I know. Yeah. Now I know she's stuck around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Champagne Gate, um, we won't talk too much about it because we'll cover it on the I, I, on The, the, the show, mom but. of Peter, by the way. Oh! oh, oh that is what I said on our show. Home to me. I said no <laughs> one loves the camera more than Peter's parents yeah from last episode destined oh destined. they could find oh they find the light they yep. find the camera they find their time to cry mm-hmm. they know what they're doing and this lady <laughs> the close-up i wanted them to do kind of a slow push on it they didn't no but it was just bring her home to us yeah for uh, what yeah it sounded like a fucking horror film yeah like, exactly for what what are you you guys chopping off arms is it some weird cuban ritual that i don't know about you're gonna put some vacuum parts inside so of her? that was a funny thing too uh you know how mike was supposed to be like the first black bachelor and they were gonna yeah. really like have a little number scrap that so they scrapped that, but then with Peter, they're really playing up his Cubanness, which they didn't ever do before. No. <laughs> he was more German right. the last time, right. and they did like German chants and everything, and it was more about that. And now they're making it a real push for the diversity of his Cuban heritage. He which looks is about as Cuban as Grimes. As I am Mexican. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's... I think the same thing is kind of happening to him that happened to me, where his mom is like, I'm Cuban, and you're like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. The weird uh, thing, so the weird thing about this season, <clears throat> and again. I still don't love it. For, yeah. For the dudes at home, obviously I watch this with you. You put up with my bullshit. A lot of dudes do. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. I, and I get a lot of messages. I watch it with you. You put up with my bullshit. And uh, um, I get into it. Like, for real. I, like, so it's, it's not a. It's entertaining. I mean, if yeah, you're not. I, like, like, the real housewife shit I can't get into. This, no, no, no. this I can. But. Because it's I, a competition. And I always, yes. And I, I think always, you guys can get into the pick, competition app. I always it. usually pick the final two or the winners or yeah. whoever it is, right? You know I'm great at that. Mm-hmm. This is the first season where I just genuinely don't like one single girl except for the lawyer that he already met. And mm-hmm. that's a weird element to me where it's just like, how did Remember you meet her? And then I... magically was on the show like a month later. 
that meme that I sent you? Yeah. That it like it morphs from her into the guy from you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and she put on her uh, Snapchat, just went, randomly ran in to the Bachelor at a hotel, and then in this TikTok, it like morphs her face into the uh, Penn you. Badgley. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it does feel a little stalkery. Yo, yeah. Or random. Oh, yeah. Not sure. She seems quite normal, but at the same time, you never know. She's a lawyer. I Look, the family seemed normal because they had that, that one episode with them. My only question is if they hooked up already, and I think that they have. That's what I think, too. So, I think they have. Um, I'm curious to see where this all goes with that because the ending looks tragic. And then I'm going to say the, the same thing I said last year, and I was correct on it. Um, when I saw Hannah B last year doing all that press Mm -hmm. i told you she looks miserable Mm -hmm. like she's not having a good time or or something wrong happens happened because most all of these other people when they go to do their press runs for um the show they're really excited and they're like oh stay tuned it's awesome hannah b was the first one where it was just like okay i think something bad happened and, and nobody's like she's not getting proposed to or married or whatever it is I feel the same way about him. His body language in all of these interviews like, is so miserable that you can tell something just happened a month ago, whatever the ending was, that it's not good. And So Colton had opened up on actually like This American Life, like a podcast. Uh-huh. Um, That's a big one. Yeah, but it's different. It's more like... I don't it's NPR, know. Right? It's NPR and it's very like documentary, like audio documentary. So they spend a lot of time with it and interviews and all of this. Mm-hmm. But anyways, he <laughs> was really pissed at the producers. So basically he talked about how they blindsided him, how they he saw that they were fucking with him mm-hmm. to get what they needed. And that I think that's kind of what happened with Hannah, right? Like I think she felt fucked with. And you you ultimately do because they you can tell you can tell if you're around all these people all the time, they're talking and then they bring something up to you and you're like, why the fuck didn't you say that? Or like you knew this was going to happen. You become friends with these little producers. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, like yeah, the yeah. PAs that are around yep. you because it's all day, all the time. Yeah. They're your person that you're talking to. So when something happens that these people that are close to you knew about, Mm -hmm. you end up, and Colton said he did it, where when Cassie came in and said that, he said that her dad came, he like looked up at all of the producers and was just like, fuck you. And like looked at all of them and he's like, they knew what I was thinking. They knew that I was pissed pissed at them. Right. Because they had just fucked with me. And so that's when they get, I think, Miserable, right? Because they just go, man, I fucking had, you shouldn't have had high hopes, but you realize toward the end how much you are a pawn in the producers and in the Bachelor Machines game of getting um, ratings, right? Mm. Or drama. Yeah. So I think towards the end, once you get close to these people, once you feel like Chris is your buddy, you know, and then he comes up and goes, me and the producers just found this out. He's like, fuck you. No, you didn't. Yeah. You know, and it looks like, I mean, he had to lay down. He needs a like cold press on his head. Right. He got told something horrible at the end. Something happened. Um, so I don't know. But I, I think I, that he, must he, be he, it. he has the same look of misery that she did. So expect for the worst on this one, I, I think. If you're watching. The, and good the, for the only you difference, you though, with the Hannah B one <clears throat> is uh, she picked the wrong fucking dude. Like all of us were screaming at the TV. We were screaming for Tyler C. But well, both. I would have taken Tyler you, C. Or, you liked or, Pete. or Pete. You liked Pete. I, I I, both of them were great. Where you were like, all right, sweet, man. That's going to be a cool life, whatever happens. Mm-hmm. Most of them don't end up married or stay married or whatever. But it right. would have been a good story and a good ending, right? That's what they should pick is someone to do all the press with. Like, who can you hang out with well, I, it, while you're doing the press for this bachelor bullshit? It may not be someone you're going to marry, but who can you have a good time with and have fun with and on this here's press the tour? surprising thing to me of if you are the producers, right, and you have somebody as popular, because in my opinion, my personal opinion, I think Hannah B was the most popular bachelorette of all time. She still is. Um, still, not of all time, but she still is. Who, who would you have above her? Exactly. So 
knowing that and how much America loved her, and they still love her. She won Dancing with the Caitlin, Stars. Bristow, I mean, maybe, yeah. She won Dancing with the Stars, like. Yeah, that's true. She, she kept it going for sure. And she's doing a bunch of correspondence stuff. Like everyone loves her. Her hooking up with Tyler C. After. Yeah, yeah. everyone she loves her. Why not give America that ending if it's all rigged, anyways? Mm-hmm. Give America that ending. Have them leave on some crazy high note, and then save a fight. Like this, this year's a shitty season, so fucking throw them under the bus. Mm. If you're, if that's the route you're gonna go, you're doing two a year, anyways. Yeah, exactly. So. Save one, make everybody leave on a high note, and then come back. That's just basic TV 101, you know? Sure. You, you got to give the people what they want and then come back with a little drama. Right. Keep them coming back. Yeah. So, because if, if this one ends bad, it's going to be a hard time to come back after this where you're just like, eh. Yeah, are they all just going to end bad now? Because we've gone from Colton, who didn't yep. go to the end, yep. didn't propose to someone. Yep. We've got Hannah B., who... Mm-hmm. Did, did and then mm. it all fell apart it all fell apart on the show though well later it was after they left remember right but it was still going on so they did <clears throat> that whole thing mm-hmm. on the show so they never did a like you know she chose who it was and they did the whole like giving of the ring thing mm-hmm. but <clears throat> um still on the show and very quickly after they showed the destruction of that then we have Pete. It looks like we're not going to have the same kind of... The formula that they used before is just not working anymore because people's tolerance for drama is way higher. Eh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They uh, need the... They, they can't have the traditional like, who's he going to pick? It has to be like, who's he going to pick? And then what are they going to say? And then what do they do? And then now how's it going to end? Yeah. They need to like go through the whole relationship to the end. I don't know. Uh, either way, uh, so I watched that, and then um, uh, popped on down the road as you hit Snooze Town, USA. Sure, for the debate. Popped on down the road. I did. I watched the debates, and phew, I, they're they're in trouble. I, yeah. They're in a lot of trouble. I, Van Jones, who's this? And this is CNN. Um, and it was on CNN last night. <laughs> um, did he cannibalize his own people? He did. He, I, which was sh- surprising, and I know everybody's talking about that this week. Of like, holy shit, you got a defector. I don't, I don't look at it that way. No. I lo- it, here's what he said: Last night felt like felt like a cold bowl of oatmeal, and he said none of these people up there last night mm-hmm. can beat Trump. Right. Um, he said I missed uh, Andrew Yang, and uh, I missed Cory Booker. Yeah, I mean, as far as like on a li- debate, as far as, as, far as like stage. interesting yeah, and lively yeah, yeah, yeah. and alert, yeah. Because right getting... now, uh, there's a, there was another review that said this is the night of the living dead. Which, I mean, fuck. I, w- when I was looking at it's it last like night, Buddha judge, right? You've Buddha judge, but it looks like you know he's their grandson. Like <laughs> it was very odd. Uh, dead serious. Cause, so picture this in your mind if you're at home, right? You've got yeah. Biden, who's a hundred years old. Yeah. Bernie Sanders, who's a hundred years old. Elizabeth Warren, who looks like a grandmother. Except for that neck. My God. I know. Young neck. Very young neck. Unusually young, young neck. neck. yeah. I need to get with her Kybella. And then person. at the end was, was Buttigieg. And it's like, grandpa, grandpa, grandmother, grandpa, Buttigieg. Mm-hmm. Um, grandson. Mm. And it was really, really strange. Um, the other but one was- But not just uh, grandpa, but like grandpa of like a 35-year-old. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. They're that age. They are, they are that age. Yeah. So to put in perspective, um, Biden's son is 50, 50. So he's yeah. 15 years older than Buttigieg. Yeah. That's Biden's son. Son. And then uh, Klobuchar was the other one. And again, that's another. Oh, gosh, she's still in it. Uh, yeah. So I don't know what you're going to do. There was the, the big heated moment that everybody keeps talking about was allegedly Bernie Sanders was overheard saying that a woman could never be president. He's saying that that wasn't true. Uh, Elizabeth, I find that really hard to believe. So that do he I would say that. So do I like I get trying to fucking I, now look, I don't agree. People. I don't agree with Bernie's politics and I'm not down for socialism. However, Bernie Sanders is, seems like a decent dude um, and well-meaning. I highly doubt I really doubt he said that. He said that. And where are you overhearing him? 
What's that? Where are you overhearing him say that? Glad you asked. Uh-huh. So it was at this get together, this little campaign get together thing. Elizabeth Warren picked up on it. She tweeted it out and said, I could win and you know, blah, blah, blah. You saying that is against women and Bernie's not for women, blah, 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 blah. Warren, right? don't touch that. Came to a head last night on CNN where one of the moderators asked the question to Bernie and said, hey, um, did you know, you it, it, yes. Did you say that a woman can never become president? And he was like, no, that is categorically false. I've never, ever said that. Blah, 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 blah. Um, the follow up question to Elizabeth Warren was this, this is verbatim. So when Bernie Sanders said that a woman could never get elected and it was just like, wait, what? Sorry. He just said he didn't. Yes. And they did not care. And they went, they already had it written down. They already had it written down and just jammed it home and it was so fast that they were sitting on that follow-up question to fucking burn him and bernie's just sitting there on stage like what the fuck yes now again where did they over this was a while ago that they overheard this Uh, a couple weeks ago yeah and was it on a hot mic was it in a dressing room it was not oh is it a get together yeah so and it wasn't recorded no it was literally just overheard by someone correct oh please yeah and so afterwards bernie was like he had to finally acknowledge like fake news where he was just like, Hey man, that's if you're going to slant that far to somebody else, like I just said, I didn't say it. So what, why, why are you saying I did? And it was CNN. So it wasn't like it was, you know, yeah, exactly. I, CNN is as far left as you can get. They're CNN's going after supposed their own to be on your fucking side, bro. <clears throat> yeah. Um, he was pissed about it. And then here's what's very interesting afterwards, right? All the candidates usually shake hands. Bernie and Elizabeth Warren, and the mics were dead at this point, did not shake hands, and they appeared to be screaming at each other. So I, it looked to me, just trying to read lips, that he said to her, and they were about two feet apart here at this point, he goes, you know I didn't say that. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was pointing at her, and he goes, you know I did not mm-hmm. say that. Mm-hmm. And she said something where she raised mm-hmm. her arms like this in a, you know, and very... Was he like, you know I do voiceovers. And she's like, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> go talk to go talk to the head of Disney. So I she, can't get you a job. She was fired up. He was fired up. And someone came in and separated them. I mean, with hands of like, hey, guys, let's just go to our dressing rooms well, here. Were they going to go to blows? I mean, let them fucking talk. It would have been awesome if, if uh, Bernie Sanders punched out Elizabeth <laughs> Did you imagine? <laughs> but they both have like the same kind of like gangly arm thing. And gestures. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, if yeah. they fought, it would be very um, like so, two blowy man. Yeah, it was uh, it was Tom Steyer who broke it up. Oh, oh, he's he's in it. He's bought his way into it. So he's on the stage, by the way. Oh, go get him, Tom. He's bought his way onto the stage. And uh, that, I, yeah, like I, his I, I even forgot about. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. I mean, I forgot about him because he's just so boring and it's like i know but he wears jeans you know what i mean (laughs) he wears like jeans but in the ranch at the ranch the ironic thing about it is he's a multi-billionaire who has bought his way onto the stage through ads and all that shit is was bloomberg there no no he wasn't um he's a little he came in a little later than steyer but the whole fucking campaign that bernie and elizabeth are running is against the billionaires and tax the billionaires I'm surprised no one took a shot at him last night and said, hey, by the way, when we said tax the billionaires and we need to get rid of the the 1%, here's a guy who just bought his way onto the stage. Like, we know nothing about this fucking guy. I think we see who the front runners are because they're fighting against each other, right? So it's like, you don't need to jab at Tom because he's not going to make it very far. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I think at this point, they're going to go after the people that are the biggest threat to them. And Bernie is to Warren and Warren is to Bernie. How did Biden, Biden do? Invisible. Yeah. All of them are just old. And I, it's, it's, it's everything that party doesn't want. They did not want the old, rich, white establishment. That is exactly what they have. And, and a lot of people were like, man, it's disconcerting to see this out of my own party. Democrats wise Mm -hmm. out of my own party of like, there's not a person of color represented or yeah, they're all gone. And and every, everything you rail against, it's easier to go after the Oscars though. 
Sure. They're I, like I, faceless. I guess, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> than it is to be like, hey. <laughs> but it's You're everything that <laughs> party does not believe in is suddenly <laughs> that's what you've ended up with here at the end of the day. I don't know what's going to happen. This, so this, this was it. This was the last debate. You were expecting some sort of fireworks or something, and you didn't get it essentially except from, from CNN, but um, not the actual candidates. Mm-hmm. So now it's off to the polls. You're, let's see. Oof. I mean, you're just a little over two weeks now. Until? Until the caucus to start. So you're going to start getting votes. The primaries oh start, man. God. Yeah. Oh, my God. And well, uh, we'll see because, the, you know, the first two come up real quick. And then after that, you know, people start to fall out and all that other stuff. And, you know, by look, by June, you have your winner. I mean, that's coming up real sure. fast. Yeah. yeah. You're five months away from whoever the candidate is going to be. So uh, it was interesting. I, I watched that. And then um, <clears throat> obviously you and I are, are back into you. Yo. We had the author on the show, Carolyn Kepnes. Fucking A, man. What a great success story. So good. Yeah. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. And uh, you and I enjoy the shit out of that. And they've been picked up for a third season already. already. Yeah. Which is crazy, right? Yeah. It's like having a kid and then two days later you're like, oh, pregnant again. Oh, all right. Shit. And everyone's freaking out about Cheer on Netflix. Don't worry, guys. I watched it. <laughs> it's intense and interesting and uh, a lot of things I didn't know. And it's, it's kind of awesome. I kinda, it's done really I, well. I watched too. a little bit of, of, of it with you. I kind of did know about that world. About? The Cheer world. How? It's a big thing in the South. Okay. So- and th- that's what it seemed like. Yeah, and it's really, like, fuck. They take it really seriously. And, like, I remember, at like, at our school when when it was, because you have to audition and try out, right? Mm-hmm. That was a massive deal for all of the girls and everybody in the school and who was going to make the team and why and all that other mm-hmm. stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, moms, take it, moms take it even almost even more seriously than the kids. Right, like, so this is collegiate. Yeah. So they don't have the moms around. but. Uh, the interesting thing I'll just say about the show is that the the school that has been winning Daytona, which is the big competition, the mm-hmm. only place they have it for college cheerleading in Daytona, is this small uh, junior college called Navarro College, um, two-year school in like the middle of buttfuck nowhere, Texas, Corsicana. Sorry if you live there. Yeah. Um, what but are they it looks for? Sorry. What are they famous for? Oh, fr- fruit cakes. Hmm? Fruit cakes. Ah, the Christmas ones. Yes. <laughs> so every Christmas they sm- sell and like package and ship over like a million of these fruit cakes. Boof. And they all come out of a factory there. But anyway, uh, it was interesting that um, because it, cheerleading is a rich person's game. You have to like the uniforms, the, if you're going to do it um, professionally or like comp- compete before college mm-hmm. or before high school, it's sort of like any other, you know, um, pageant or something where you need money for the clothes, you need the coaches, you need to like, you know what I mean? It costs a lot of money <clears> to do it. So it's kind of a rich person's game. So I love the cool thing about this is that this kind of shows that if you just, and everyone at this school has a pretty hard life and a hard story and come from a very difficult background um so it kind of just shows that hard work determination good coach like all these things can get you farther than just a bunch of money so i really like it uh i'm not gonna say if they win or not okay but it's very intense yeah 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 yeah. and it's good and I'm not usually on the very beginning of a trend like that, but it's starting to come out. People are watching Cheer, and it's real good. Yeah, the, the what I'm grateful for is we don't have a daughter. I, I don't want to do any of that shit. Right. But there's a lot of guys in cheerleading. No, I know that. Um, but Especially in this, because they do a bunch of stunts, like hardcore shit. Sure, so, sure, sure. I. So... 
We, we more than likely will not have a son in cheerleading as well. Yes, he, uh, he will probably not be um, big enough, really. I mean, that's the only thing. Yeah, I mean, you've got to be a large person. You have to be able to hold up a whole other human with one yeah. hand. Yeah. And um, gosh, he's that, cute. But... He's cute, but he's not going to be able to do that, I don't think. <laughs> and who knows? But if Maybe I they'll did, come if out with child that, steroids, huh? Yeah, baby steroids. They will at some B-roids. point, right? They do. Uh, that was another thing I heard about on a fucking podcast, Mayor, of these parents that give their kids that um get prescribed human growth hormone for their kids for them to get scholarships. Get scholarships. That's insane to me. Well, you know the big thing is red shirting your child. It's like I knew it was happening, <clears throat> but that's fucking hardcore. So these crazy parents that like need their kids to do whatever sport they want them to do, right? Yeah. They do. They get prescribed human growth hormone for their children. And the red shirting is is another thing where you hold your kid back a year, so that way they have one it's more year. It's harder of growth. and harder to do that mm-hmm. now because people know the deal. So, but because you look at uh, LSU's championship, right? Uh, the quarterback um, Joe Burrow is twenty three because he was on his fifth year. Um, he had graduated and. Um, but that happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it it is definitely an advantage when oh yeah you're 23 mm-hmm. years old and able to learn playbooks yeah. and everything else. Yeah, you're a man playing against boys. So, uh, sort of. There's bigger quarterbacks and all that stuff than him. But I, I think mentally, it's mentally, it's maturity, it's, yeah, uh, it's yes. all these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's it. Definitely helps. Um, his was on accident. He didn't try to do it, and his parents never tried to do it. It's just he had to transfer um, to play. So. That that's certainly not the case in this. Mm-hmm. However, I think it it worked to his advantage, where it was just like, oh shit, you're able to read defenses more. Because I mean, you've got to be smart as shit to play quarterback. By the way, that oh is, yeah, the, you're learning, and especially on the fly like two, that. I always think plays. like under pressure oh, too yeah. of just like, and you know, your coach has to tell you one thing, and then you have to get it. It can't be like, what was that one again? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you're Ooh. reading defenses, if they've got you figured out, you go through sometimes four to five progressions to try to find the open receiver. That is all happening in under two seconds. So, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it's wild. It's wild, but I think it's being honest about who your kids are too and uh, deciding that. Where I, There's so many parents that think their kids are the next Tiger Woods or – Whoever, where it's just like, man, no, mm. no. I, I just, I don't think there's enough honesty amongst parents. You and I are maybe too honest. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if he wants, I know. If he wants to play soccer. I think he can play soccer. Nope. That is a, not, that is a non-U.S. white man sport. That yeah. is okay. definitely overseas. Um, if he wants Our to... soccer team in the United States did not even make uh, the World Cup. If he wants to be a tumbler. Nah. Cheerleading tumbler. Scratch you can't that. be a stunter, nope. but you can be a tumbler. Didn't scratch that you off. You can make it on mat, you guys. I know all the lingo now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. He's very artistic. So I'm cultivating that a little bit. But um, I don't know. I mean, fuck, he's five. If, if you're he asking me. He literally just wants to have fun. You have no idea. None. You never even thought about it? What he wants to do? No. What do you, what do you think he will do? What I think he will do. Um, I think he will try and do something in the vein that we do. I think he could be like Logan Paul, to be honest with you. I don't know about Logan Paul, but I think he could. Be... I know. Look, I know Logan Paul has a negative stereotype, but a fun, fun-loving, affable, like you know, yeah. Because I, I look at this when people shit on uh, Logan and Jake Paul at that at those at the, that age when you're making videos like that. That's fucking ninety percent of dudes at you know that age. And oh, t- look, you grow it, up and you get mm-hmm. out of stuff, and you know, shit. We've all done it. Um. I've given shitty interviews in the past and, uh, you know, as I was young and didn't know, um, it happens. Yeah. It happens. And you grow out of it and become the person you're eventually going to become. But I see him taking an interest in things like that, where it's like, if you're going to ask me if he's going to play in the NFL or NBA, probably not. But is he going to be no. 
a funny, crazy little motherfucker on the internet, probably. I will <laughs> no. say, like, he was playing basketball with his friends that are in basketball, <clears throat> and the guy was like, dude, I'm bummed that he's actually not. And again, that's a fun thing. He's But I don't white. think there's any... Oh, I know. But like, I don't think there's any other sport that they'd be like, oh boy, like we really need Jacks on our team. Right. <laughs> but for basketball, they were like, he can really, he can actually get it up there. Yeah. And he's like, it's more than the other kids that are on the team. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. He's funny. And he's, you take it where you can, right? He's like, funny as shit. So like, I think that's You take it route. where you can. Yeah. If someone's like, hey, he's really good. You're like, awesome. Yeah. That's and good. Then, and you I, know, you and I, now that you're 36 in the world, she didn't need to make enough money to pay off these colleges. We got an Aunt Becky. Him. You've become the Aunt Becky now. Yeah. I love the news story. It's like, apparently the kids are doing fine, college or not. They always were. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't know why their parents were even so. I think there is more to this story, by the way. I just, I read yesterday that uh, two people from USC's athletic department got fired. Yeah, there was more to it. There's more people that are are. Complicit, yeah. You do, they don't do it by themselves. They're not paying so, nobody. I think it's like somebody has to take the money. I think part of her defense might be just in reading what happened yesterday. Might be, hey man, they wanted this girl because she has a million followers. Her check, she says her check says USC. Yes, and it, but here's the other thing. I think, look, the row. Nobody wants to be on the fucking rowing team, and this is what this is over for her daughter. Mm -hmm. They pretended she was a rower. Yeah, yeah. right, but. You ripping pictures or taking pictures to promote your own road team and everything else, it certainly helps. A boring sport that nobody follows. If you got a girl who's got a million Instagram followers, um, you know, posting, hey, mm -hmm. I'm at USC, I'm rowing, mm -hmm. or, or I give the appearance of it. She didn't do that, though. I know she didn't. Okay. But if, if you're the rowing team and you're like, hey, let's get this girl in the school. Yeah, and just and venture. Have her post, venture. Yeah. That's all you can do. Take some pictures with her and then put she her on the bench. Practice. She technically It's a great rowed. workout. Yeah. Rowing's a great workout. She doesn't have to actually be in the competitions. I you think know. where they messed up is that their kids didn't fall in line. So. Oh. It's just like with anything. Red flags get put up when red flags are put up, right? So it's like if they would have gone yeah. to school, not talked about it on YouTube, not said they didn't want to go to school anyway, like this sucks like if they didn't do any of that yeah they may have flown under the radar i'm just saying the kids <laughs> are the problem it's always the kids it's always the kids uh we got some sponsors kids pay for this this little fuckery to be on the air first and foremost talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros what up girl what up girl what girl ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros Finest mattresses in the biz. Half off the adjustable bases. That is including the 36-month pay-as-you-go program, which, which has no interest whatsoever. If you're military or a first responder, you get 15% off forever. Everything in the entire store. Um, the sheets, man. I want to highlight the sheets tonight, Japes. How great are those things? They really are awesome. They're a tight sheet. Do you know what I'm saying, guys? Well, here's the thing. They They're have elastic sheet. around them that says Around the entire ghost thing. Bed. Yeah, it's like a fucking. But it's like. It's a tight. It's, it's like a snug pair of it's underwear. It's a soft, tight sheet. So people that like making beds and like looking at the bed like perfect. Yeah. These sheets are a The maz. best. A maz. Yes, the best. Um, huge fan of uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Go there. They're dills, 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 dills are amazing. $200 off a mattress right now. And uh, she's getting crazy over a ghost bed. Next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. Jabes. Boom, boom, boom. Shabloinkers. You look lost in thought over there. What are you reading about? What are you reading about, huh? Do we have a, Nothing. Let's let's tease it. Do we have a do we have a crime corner yes. later? Yeah. So just leave me the fuck alone for a second, please. Uh, I'm not going to. You know why? Why? Um, it must be good. When you get lost in thought, that gets me excited. I get a it's like oh go I ahead. I get a lady get boner over it. Hashtag Shut lady the boner. Fuck up. Yeah. Now I'm just using lines from your show, your own show. Ooh. Everybody's listening, Jabes. Ooh. The world is watching lady you. Boner. You yeah, live in so a bubble I now. I keep getting hashtag lady boner all over. All over. This is why. This, this is why. why. You're welcome. 
You're welcome. Um, Strikeforceenergy.com. I'm drinking it right now, Japes. Are you? Yeah. Shocked by that? Nope. I'm turned up. Good for you. <laughs> I'm charged up. Happy for you. Turn. Four yep. amazing flavors. Yar. <laughs> Yar. Yar. <laughs> Grape. Ridge. Orange. Lemon. 10 back, 40 back, 750 milliliter bottle. Everyone's on a diet right now. Every single person. No Should carbs, I pack no sugars. This? Ooh, for Vegas, you might as well. Might as well. Right? Uh, we out the dough tomorrow. Um, heading to, to Vegas. To the- here, here. <laughs> we will both be there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I got a story here. I'll finish the Strike Force Energy. Nobody wants you. to hear your fucking bullshit. You want to hear this one? <laughs> I, I can tell you Is that. Is it good? Eh, it involves OJ Simpson. You tell me. <gasps> Yeah. I'm not going to be I'll, there yet. No. It, it, well, we'll see. I'll, I'll tell you right after this. All right. Uh, Strikeforceenergy.com is, uh, look, five hours. Energy. If you're on a diet, you don't want to crash. It's the only thing that's going to keep you alert. Tasty, tiny little tin pouch. Rip it open. Squeeze it into any liquid available. Go to Strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION. 20% off. They have a subscription of the month club, too. Which we've been on for four fucking years, I think, at this point. I'm addicted to this shit. Uh, so I'm not going to hide it. Not going to hide it. Last but not least, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Is it? Schmooze. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, you like it? There was a guy who wrote in yesterday who said, I just got uh, new subwoofers and tweeters in my car, Ooh. and I'm positive that jesse blew it out with <gasps> you, with a you break it on the show i'm sorry um can you imagine if i did uh, send us the bill no do no, not do not send do it that to, sorry send it to ross do not do that send it to dan he takes care of all that stuff <laughs> don't send it to Dan. just no. send him a picture of nope. the invoice he'll, he'll go it. ahead and pay that none of it none of it <laughs> no. i'm not gonna do that uh james That's what's a, the we got close to 500 episodes of that so no having <laughs> Uh, having a gal in the company she'll really spend your money won't she jeez I know you gotta keep just the company card away from you yeah. just pay him pay him send it to Dan uh, straightrazors.com shampoos beard oils conditioners mustache waxes um, they're fucking straight razors they're second to none smolder aftershave is the best dude I look if you use aftershave in this life buy a, just one bottle of that tell me there's a fucking better aftershave on the planet uh, they got shaving kits um, I, I'm using the mustache wax as we speak the stash is nice. Yeah. It's weird. Like, I haven't thought about it either. Yeah, will you keep it groomed um, above the lip, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I don't go down below the lip. I think if you do, that's when you have to think about it, right? When you have to, like... Yeah, whoosh, brush it aside, I guess. I don't know. Yes, it's a nice thing. Otherwise, though. it's just... We all have a mustache. <laughs> yeah. If you, uh, if you get a straight razor... We all razors, have a mustache we don't think about, huh? Yeah. No, you don't. Um, Everybody does. Yeesh. Go to straightrazors.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. I don't want to think about you. I want to think about you hairless and beautiful um, with the hair and all the necessary places. Well, I'm not. (laughs) Any of those. (laughs) Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off at straightrazors.com. So the O.J. Simpson thing is this. Have we been in touch with him? Yes. What do you mean? Um, Recently? uh, this has been going on for like two okay, or three months. Okay, yeah. Now, um, for drinking bros. Uh huh. And we're going to be in Vegas where he lives mm-hmm. for, for six days, right? Mm-hmm. And there was a, a an introduction of like, hey, do you guys want to meet up or whatever? Mm-hmm. And we're like, yeah, well, we'll meet and, and chat about what, what's going on. And uh, we were like, so what does he want to come on the show? What is, what's, 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 what gives? Yes. And he said, no, not currently, right, not right now, because um, he's doing, and I hope I'm not ruining his shit, but, oh, fuck it. He's doing cares. his own. Yeah, he's doing his own podcast. Yeah, everyone knows that, but it's, oh, gonna, but it's gonna be behind a paywall, so you won't have to worry about him on the charts or anything. Ah. Uh, so he will have his own, it'll, it'll be like an Alex Jones sitch, but I forget who is doing this for him. And it's, like it's the somebody, paywall. Look, I, I know this. It's someone big. He's got a couple episodes in the can and he's yeah. waiting to 
He's waiting to release maybe four or five, and then he's going to start hitting everywhere else. But he was the interesting thing about it. He said, look, you know, with your audience size, we're, we would like to, and sports knowledge and all that, all that other shit. Um, but he said uh, Snoop Dogg has hit him up to be on a show, mm-hmm. and so is Oprah. And I was surprised by that. I was like, you know, I thought Oprah would have steered clear. But then again, it, it's a fascinating interview. Yeah. Because if, if he's going to talk about she's shit. She's interviewed all Ku Klux Klan. Like, she interviews she's all types done, of you people. You name it so, in this life, yeah, yeah, she yeah. has done it. I mean, she got a fucking a president elected, for Christ's sakes. Like, she's done it. Um, the thing that was really interesting about that is, I think if he's going to open up about it, because obviously the... The uh, elephant in the room is so. Do you uh, you want to talk about that double murder or um, you know what I'm saying? Or the book or uh, yeah, all of it. Yeah, I I think there is probably only one person he's going to be remotely honest with, and it's probably Oprah. So sometimes, and this is very very rare with guests, we get a form from their agent of like, don't ask certain questions right Mm. it's only happened maybe four or five times in the history of all of these shows Mm -hmm. which you know we're sitting total between this and uh drinking bros right around 1100 episodes there's a lot a lot of fucking shows four times i think that's happened that's it where it was like hey man Uh, one person just walked in and said i don't want to talk about this but everything else is fair game blah 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 Mm -hmm. I, i have a feeling that would be the first thing that they would say of like, hey, man, we're not talking about this, but everything else. Because um, he did another podcast uh, just about sports, I guess. So, mm-hmm. um, But it was, a, I think, a Howard S- Stern disciple. So I don't know why they chose that one or whatever, but he is going to do a podcast. And I know the Goldman's, Ron Goldman's sister has a pretty big podcast, right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of weird. Uh, it's weird because... He, like when he joined Twitter, I mean, he's over, I think a million followers already. And when he posts a video and he posts a lot of videos, Mm -hmm. mostly about sports and the game or fantasy football and all that thing, Mm -hmm. all that stuff, he's getting millions of views on these. So. Yeah. I mean. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know what to think about all this, to be honest with you. I look, we've had some friends who said, Hey. I do not have him on the show. Like, that's fucked. Well, you know my stance. I do, yeah. You can have him on the show, but I'm not going to be anywhere around. <laughs> I don't a even want to be A lot of people say you Vegas. look like her. Yeah. No, I don't, but I from far away. <laughs> from a bedroom window, yeah. <laughs> um... So yeah, man. I... I might be I might trigger him. I, that's all I'm that's all I'm thinking. It might be a trigger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man. But anyways, um, I hope you guys get to hang out with him though. That'd be real cool. The 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 what it I don't know. It's so he's I don't know. He's I mean, been such a weirdly fascinating person in my life personally. Um murders are fascinating. A lot the, of them here's are. the thing, besides the murder, like I remember this is a genuine statement. I remember watching the Naked Gun franchise as a kid. Oh, yeah. I fucking loved those movies. That style of humor where you're delivering it as a drama, straight one-liners, Leslie oh, Nielsen, yeah. even because OJ was in all those fucking movies. Mm-hmm. All the delivery of all those people, like th- those movies, Airplane, Love Airplane, all that style had a very big influence on me as the movies and comedy that I, I love. I like that style where everybody's playing it completely serious. Mm-hmm. I don't like over the top fucking banana peel shit. Right. Whoopsie. Grrr. So. You're more like subtle, just like shit in a face kind of thing. Just like a real subtle. No, movie. like you, t- you take that shit in the face scene in FDR American Badass, which everybody talks about. It's done super serious. Yes. And it's, it's so ramped up and so heightened. We are <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah. my God, man, you see somebody pour an entire gallon of milk on their face um, and then crash through a table. Uh, yeah. You know, he's handicapped and he 
tries to stand up. Like oh. it just keeps escalating oh, yes. no, no. over and over and to, to the height of absolute insanity. I like shit like that. The Naked Gun franchise and all that stuff was one of my favorites as a kid. I remember my parents taking me to go see these things and just laughing my ass off. Oh, yeah. Also, he, he was the sideline reporter for every NFL game. I, I've always been into football. I've always played football since I was five, six years old. Mm-hmm. He was on the sidelines for every single game. Like I, He was on TV every day for me. Like it, it's, mm-hmm. it's just odd. And then the whole... When, when all that shit went down with the murders, um, I was in high school and I was watching the NBA playoffs, you know, because I'm a huge NBA fan. They broke into that story and it just, all of it seemed surreal and like, it was one of those, it, it was, it's probably one of the biggest news events in my life as oh, a yeah. kid where mm-hmm. you remember and you're like, all right, shit. Same. And it's fucked up. And as, the trial as it, and everything. Yes. yes but but yes, it's yes, fucked up yes. as, it's, as, as it sounds like that. The Challenger, and then probably the Challenger exploding. Because mm-hmm. I was a kid watching that in, the, in a classroom. Mm-hmm. And then the, I guess, I, the, the wall coming down in, in Germany. Even though I didn't know what it, I didn't know what it meant. Um, seemed like a big deal. Seemed like a party. Yes, it did. It, for real. So you're like, okay. So I, those events, so you're just like, all right, weird. And um, look, we've joked about it for years on, on Drinking Bros and shit. Like... We have an O.J. Simpson jersey Look on the set. so Jared would love it. He could bring his kids. <laughs> they love him. <laughs> We're huge supporters of him here, I guess. No. I'm not. I know. That's the thing. Look, is like, I know. I know. But at the same time, like, I know. I know. And I've I, had it's my. Funny, and it, listen, it's funny from afar, but that's what I'm telling you. If you guys really do get him on, I do not want to be anywhere around it. <laughs> I know. I know. I know you know, but I'm just saying like, I know I get it's funny. I get he had so many other things besides a murderer. <laughs> I get all that, right? I get that like being a murderer, domestic violence, like that's only a small part of who he is. <laughs> and he's such a, he's so much more. <laughs> and people can really make a lot of money off of him. And I love that. <laughs> and I love that as a society, like we all sort of and i think we do i think we do all agree like we do sort of agree that like would you take a picture with him probably yeah if he was around would you take a selfie and he wanted to say hey take a selfie with you would would you post it yeah yeah would it be a funny caption probably yeah and that's a lot of people because we're at this point now where um we kind of forget, but I haven't forgotten. No, and all yeah. the blondes in America, I think, uh, have all not the white forgotten. Blondes, yeah. yeah. We're kind of like. So yeah. I, I have a very small circle of friends and you know, under 10 tops, like, and uh, who I really trust with anything where it's just like, all right, great. Um, it's not like the plastic cup boys or anything stupid shit like that. Um, they don't keep you from cheating on your wife. Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, so. I pitched them and I said, hey, what, what about this? And I, because I have like seven close friends from college, right? And we're all on this group thread. And uh, what six, was the overwhelming response? Six out of seven said, don't do it. Really? Yeah. And I was, I was really surprised by that. And I was like, do you not see the comedy Me element too? And they're like, we do, but. Maybe I'm wrong. Huh? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe more people are on my side than yours. I think, I think so. Okay. To be honest with you. And that's, that's been the hard, hardest part about all this for me personally. Where it's trying to get over the fascination and the other shit. Um, you know, also, like, the other weird part about it, and I guess I'll open up about this now, but Judith Regan, who was uh, AKA the queen of controversy and did, she had the show on Fox, Fox News forever and Fox, and she did the actual interview with OJ, mm-hmm. um, the If I Did It. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was also the one at uh, Penguin at the time who put out his book. Mm-hmm. and got fired for it subsequently. Mm-hmm. Um, they pinned it all Didn't on her. Didn't put it out, by the way. Well, here's the thing. They all agreed to do it. They paid him a lot of money. Um, she was the one who spearheaded this, mm-hmm. and then when there was a big public outcry, and they took they, it off the shelves and burned all the copies, um, she got fired. She, in turn, sued Penguin mm-hmm. for a gajillion dollars. Mm-hmm. There was a massive settlement, I heard, in the 12 to $20 million range, mm-hmm. and... Uh, she ended up starting her own publishing company through Simon & Schuster, right? Mm-hmm. She was the one who 
personally gave me a break in the literature world. Mm -hmm. She put out At Night She Cries While He Rides a Steed. Mm -hmm. It is very, very, very aggressive. Mm -hmm. She is aggressive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked her, because we, you know, the first meeting we had uh, was in the office and, and all that other stuff. You know, you meet with 12 publicists and uh, art designers and all that stuff, right? And then afterwards, because uh, her daughter worked there at the time, um, I went to a very small lunch. It mm -hmm. was two, three hours or whatever at this place that super underground New York, you know, the cool shit where you're like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Can't relate. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> anyways. Instead of brag, that's what I'm going to say. Go it ahead. was me, my mm -hmm. agents, uh, her daughter, her, and then like the right hand man at the company. And um, it was pretty much like a let's get to know you. Why did you do this? Would you have any questions for me? Blah, 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 blah. And of course I did. And I asked about the OJ thing. Mm. And I said, I know the story behind all of this with you and blah, blah, blah. And, and she emphatically said, yeah, he fucking did this. Like, mm. um, we had numerous conversations about it. And that's not news. I, I know that. But for someone to speak with him and be like, yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah. And because they had to plan out that interview. Yeah. Um, and the interview didn't end up blaring. They, Fox shelved the interview, too, for, what, 15 years? Mm -hmm. And they just aired it a year ago or a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Finally, after all this time. And, she was, and then she did the special and, on Fox and all that other stuff. And, uh, you know, when you're doing an interview of that magnitude, she said total that, you know, it lasted about three or four hours. And uh, during it, like, she, she was like, I know I'm interviewing a murderer. Like there's, it's fucking bizarre, man. And uh, you try to be a professional about it, but it's it's creepy as shit. Yeah. So. And he's big, right? And he's he a large is man. Scary, and he is, you know, weird, and uh, you know, also a murderer. But again, so many other things. He's so much more than just a murderer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're I they're trying to set up a lunch as we speak, or. Uh, a thing i don't we'll see what happens but. use your judgment again i won't be there yet so you don't have to worry about we will that not, no but uh yeah we'll see yeah just uh <clears throat> schedule it for before i get there and yeah either way i we i know i chatted about this a couple of months ago and people a couple of people would email me a follow-up of like hey man you getting the juice or what and i'm like it's complicated um so we'll see i, I don't i don't know i haven't made we've made a decision but uh yeah it's strange um interesting the stats of your good friends though I'd maybe yeah. I'd maybe revisit that chat before. I I did and and well some of them were like sponsor related of like hey man your sponsors could drop you and I said no it's actually the opposite. Okay. It's gangbusters for ratings and they were all in when we mm. were like hey what do you think about this and they were like is it gonna sell X and I'm like eh, probably you know hmm. so uh, we didn't get any kick we haven't gotten any kickback from like Alex Jones they, nobody said anything about that yeah. Uh, or Milo. Nobody said anything about that. Um, yeah. They haven't. Have they killed anyone? Eh. Some say Alex Jones is worse, but who knows? Worse than OJ? Sandy Hook. Calm thing. down. Sandy Hook thing. Look. I don't know. I, I Look, I don't know. I don't know what the real story was with that, but. Uh, that was really bad. Yes. That was really bad. But I don't know. I, we don't know what the real story is. I don't know what the real story is. So I don't know. Um, OJ, I think we do know the real story. Um, but speaking of which, you said something very interesting um, earlier. Of like, would you take a selfie with him or people and write a funny post and all that other shit? Uh, Aaron Hernandez doc came out last night at midnight. Mm -hmm. People have been waiting mm -hmm. for a while to see this, and everybody is hooked. Mm -hmm. Everyone is hooked. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to watch it. I mean, it literally just came out last night at midnight. Yeah. You're not staying up till midnight to watch docs. Um, no. No. Um, it, the crazy thing about this is so we I met Aaron Hernandez out one night um, with one of my best friends from college. He was on my fantasy football team, as was my buddy. And uh, I took a selfie with Aaron Hernandez. Well, I, I shot it for my buddy. I just yeah. took a picture of my buddy and Aaron Hernandez. And mm -hmm. um, we still kind of laugh about it to this day where it's just like, hey, man, remember that night? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I don't know. I'm fascinated to watch this one in particular because the way the dates work up 
work for this particular photo that I took. I think, and we're gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to go back and match this date with the doc because it's speculation and I don't know, but I think he murdered two people um, potentially like 30 days before this picture. Mm-hmm. Which, I look, right, Ty chatted with him for you know, five, 10 minutes, him and his buddies, mm-hmm. and uh, a likable dude, extremely nice, and at no point did I thought I was talking to a, a murderer at that point. Right. You know? Yes. Um, which is super strange. And uh, the, the feedback from this Netflix doc that everybody's talking about right now mm-hmm. is saying this has a lot more unexpected twists and turns than we possibly could have imagined about this guy's life. So I'm all in. I can't wait for this. I don't know if it's just one, if it's a movie or they broke it up into... That seems to be the theme right now, right? Yeah, just so that you can digest it. It's like easier, easily digested from, uh, by the ADD world mm. that we are living in now, right? Of like, okay, I can watch half an hour. It can either binge or I can watch half an hour and go to bed, right? So it's like uh, easy gotcha. for everyone to handle. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to watch this and uh, pretty pretty amped about it. Um, lastly, I wanted to talk about, um, rock and roll hall of fame got announced today. You know, they do that once a year and they, they mm-hmm. pop people in, mm-hmm. um, there's a certain outrage for an artist and I'm, I want to get your, uh, opinion on this. Okay. Um, so the list includes, um, Whitney Houston, mm-hmm. Nine Inch Nails, mm-hmm. uh, Notorious B.I.G., mm-hmm. um, Depeche Mode, the Doobie Brothers, <laughs> come on, okay. the Doobies, um, and T-Rex. Yeah. Okay, so here's, yeah. here's the, the big debate. Okay. Pat Benatar is, was nominated and up for it. She did not get in, but T-Rex got in over Pat Benatar. Fair or not fair? Um... Fair. I mean, I don't know what fair and not fair is, and with the Hall of Fame, I actually don't even know how they choose every. Do they choose every year? It's yeah, every year. So okay. it's like the, it's kind of like and the ha- football Hall of Fame. Like, all right, how do they choose? Some like, people what's don't the get criteria? in. Okay, so it's just votes, right? And people vote, and then um, you so, know you have a list of ten. If you don't make it, you have to uh-huh. get past a certain percentage point. Uh-huh. And if you don't, um, then you you're still up for it following years. But, uh, yeah. Um, so T-Rex is, was moderately big back in the day, right? Mm-hmm. But their cult following after has taken them to this point. Yeah. So I say yay. Okay. But I thought Pat Benatar was in already. <laughs> like, that's kind of crazy. Um, but I guess if you look at, like, the amount of hits or, like, the amount of songs. Yeah. The amount of things they've continued to do throughout mm-hmm. the years. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the ty- the criteria, although I know I'd much rather listen to T Rex than Pat Benatar. So here's my T Rex story. I, I, and oddly enough, I have one. Mm-hmm. When I score all these movies and sit down and add music to them or whatever, I'm always looking for interesting artists and all that stuff across the planet. Mm-hmm. My music supervisor at the time said, Hey man, um, I got a call from T Rex's manager, and they they would be open to having you license some music for for the film. And I was like, "Forgive me, I don't know who T Rex is." And they were like, "Oh, well, just go to the catalog and then listen to all of it and tell me what you think." Right. I've never heard of them. It was unbelievably fascinating and interesting the music it was Mm -hmm. really different i don't really know how to categorize it to be honest with you and very british i'll say that right so british rock slash what a little bit poppy weird they try weird things they're a little bit kind of bowie-ish yeah Yeah, i I I really don't know what to label them as um uh either way i use the song there was a song called spaceball ricochet 
Okay. So I used it in this movie. I believe it was FDR American Badass as well. I think. Shit. Okay. Or Darnell Dawkins Mouth to Start a Legend. One of them. I used no, it was it was it was uh it was FDR American Badass. Mm. Either way, I, I used this track in there. And again, I just thought it fit well in the scene. It, it sounded cool. I thought they were cool. And it's called Spaceball Ricochet if you want to look it up. Uh, I was shocked when the movie came out. How many fucking messages I got of like, hey, man, way to use T-Rex. Yeah. You're fucking cool. It's like that. It is. And yeah. like I got it like a so lot like of. So like now I'm like to the Hall of Fame. I'm like, you're cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, good job. Because Pat Benatar is the easy answer. But again, she should have already been in. Let's be real. Don't you think? I think so. Yeah. So. I was surprised T-Rex got in. Sucks we got to wait another year. I, I, look, year. I listen to everything across the board. In, unless, until this music supervisor hit me up about T-Rex, I would not I would have never known who T-Rex is. Yeah. I don't hear him on Sirius XM or any of these oldies stations. Like, it's just not an artist that pops up a lot. Um, but, or a band. I don't know if it's one dude or a band, to be honest with you. T-Rex? Yeah. Oh, it's a band of a bunch of people. Oh, really? Yeah. If you go to like their members, it's like... That's funny, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, but I got a lot of like, hey, man, you're really fucking cool for doing this. Like, that's really interesting to add that into a comedy of T-Rex. I, again, I just used it because it's it sounded right in that scene. No idea about T-Rex until afterwards. And then there, the fans of T-Rex were just like, mm -hmm. thank you, man. That's fucking awesome. Way to continue the legacy, brother. Right. I was like, all right, sweet. Um, but he's in. Or they're in. All of them. Men and women? Who knows? In the band? Yeah, who knows? Uh, James, we got a crime corner today? Oh, we do. Uh, do you remember Billy Elliot? Yeah. That movie? Yeah, yeah. So they did the whole score and song for that. Really? Yeah. And like, it was a really cool choice oh, for was, that it, same thing because they're like ballet and all this stuff. And they did the entire soundtrack, which is like. Fuck you. So I didn't know cool, that. Right? Yeah. It, so, that that soundtrack was awesome. Yeah. It, so it was it original song. Made the movie, to be songs. honest with you. Yep. So T Rex fucking good job. You deserve it, I think. Oh, look, anyway. their music's cool as shit. I just it is not one of those bands from the seventies, eighties that people are No, but it's kind of spanned it's gone beyond that, I think. And it's like I said, it's always been like if you like T Rex, you're cool. Right? It's always been like that. Yes. That, yeah. that was the feedback I got from everybody. Um, so this... Oh, okay, Crime Corner. Go ahead. Uh, crime Corner. Crime Corner. <laughs> crime Corner. So this one is in-depth. Um, and it's coming to me from Detective... Oh, bro. You're going to keep on singing You're and gonna giving keep the people on what they want. And and I did, no, I don't want to. Oh, no, 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 no. Brian Burnett. Okay, good job. Ah. Good job. You made the cut. Anyway, this one's in depth, so we're going to see if we can handle it. Okay. Grandma mistakenly booked into a Mi Miami jail as a man. <laughs> Court ruling details who has no blame. So they um, thought she was transgender. Put this grandma Oof. into oh. Miami. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Correction, correctional facility, detention center, the Metro West, by the way, with all dudes. Oh, God. For 10 hours. <laughs> the Miami jail system is fucking eesh. awful. Eesh, eesh, eesh. So, um. Yikes, dude. Yeah. How old? She's 55. So a grandmother arrested in Miami suffered a serious indignity at the hands of the Miami-Dade uh, County Corrections Department. Jailers booked her as a man, and she spent nearly 10 hours in a holding cell surrounded by <laughs> leering inmates. Now, here's the problem, guys, with the transgender thing. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to step on any toes. Does mm -hmm. she look manly? Yeah. Right? Does she have a driver's license? And look, they do strip searches, so they really did fuck up. Like, they fucked up. That's just it. And um, the judge also threw out her lawsuit saying that jail staffers were protected from a, from a trial for negligence. But clearly, 
it was an outrageous mistake. So they're appealing. More to the story, though. Oh, boy. More to the, I know, awful. Because you're just like, hello, what am I doing? Look, we've all been in jail. It's Sure. I could not imagine. Could you imagine being booked in a dude's, in, in a city like that? I mean. You're not going to the Hollywood jail. You know what I'm saying? No, but at the same time, yeah, no. And especially if they think she's transgender. Or like, I mean, I, I don't know what. It's awful. Oof. It's awful. Sucks anyways. So this lady, I don't know what your first, um, like, perception of this is no. as I say it. Right. But not true. So Picardo, that's her name, her last name. She's 55. She's an attorney and a locally elected official in the Dominican Republic. Come on. She had come to Miami in 2013 to witness the birth of her grandchild, and she was taken into custody, custody on an old drug case that mm-hmm. she didn't know was outstanding. It's happened to me. Um, she, <laughs> Drugs? I was coming back from Panama. Really? And there was some old, old shit, real old shit. But when you're coming back from Panama or you're coming up from Dominican, yeah, yeah. all these little tiny things pop up. Yeah. Whereas if you're flying domestic or whatever, mm. they're not going to like whatever. I didn't know this was happening. I like how I'm like turning it into me. I didn't know it was it was happening. And that's why they were going through all my shit and being like keeping me in a room and being super crazy with me. Mm-hmm. I think that's how I got through because I was just so like confidently indignant about it that like they were like, okay, you know, right. If I'd have known what they had found or what they were even talking about, I would have been like freaked out. Sure. And probably would have been held there. Probably wouldn't have went to jail like right there as I entered the country. Right. But because I didn't know, I was just like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, there's tampons in there. Like, what is this? What is this? I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Confidently like there. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. It helps that I'm white. I know it's yeah. sad, but it's true. Way to use your privilege. I know. And it's it just that's what it is. And I, I had a ham with me, a full ham. A honey baked ham? Yeah. And I think that might have been the problem. So um, you can't bring ham. Into no, foreign countries. you can't. Yeah. You can't bring it back. A lot of people de-ham you. They want their ham to stay local. Yeah. Uh, that's not true. But anyway, so she had come. She's like an elected official. She's very respected. Yeah. She came here to witness the birth of her grandchild, gets arrested, gets booked with a bunch of dudes. I mean, uh. does she come back to America? Probably not ever again. I mean, this is the worst. Um, but again, she's an attorney, so she's really pushing this forward. And she wants uh, she wants justice. And I have to be honest that I want it for her. Because, my God, it doesn't matter. Even if you look like a dude. Yeah. Which a lot of, you know, grandmas do. Uh, st- still, you have stripped searches. You see, that's either the best post-op you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or you're not looking because it's a grandma. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but something really, something, oh. someone fucked up. Someone oh. was caught oh. sleeping. Oh. <laughs> I don't, so here's the thing. If you got to pull, you got to cough, you got to do all these things. Well, when you get arrested, like when you get booked, by the way, when you get booked and sent up, you have to do all these things. Right. But if was you're she booked just and sent the, up or was she just in a holding? Hello. What did I just say? She was put into the male part. So you're booked. You, got, you have the orange suit. You are going up. You are getting your job. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So for booking, which is the only thing that you've been, which is in the drunk tank, essentially. Right, right, right. And for that, it's like, whatever. You don't actually get strip search. You don't whatever. But yeah. once they give you your clothes and they send you into Gen Pop, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, they you check the, you. Yeah. Right? Yeesh. What do they do for ladies? Do they All the same. You have to pull badge? everything open and cough. Your, your vagina as well? No way. Anywhere where you can keep stuff, yes. Oof. That's crazy. How do you fuck that up? Exactly. How do you fuck that up? That doesn't make any sense. Again, like because it was a grandma, were you like, do you just turn away? Or you thought it was a transgender, so you're like, okay, good, you're good, cough. I don't know. There's so many people that you have to go through in the jail, by the but way. You go to this person, this person, tits. this person. Like, yeah. Yeesh. Is there a picture of her? Yeah. What do you think? What's your call? I mean, look, if I saw her on the street, 
Well, yeah. What, what do you? What's your gun to head? What do you say? I would not know. Dude or woman? But what do you? What's I your would... first thought? You, Jesse Wiseman. Will they have her a pick? Number thirty-six in the world. What do you say? I say woman. I say woman. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. But um, she has makeup on here. She's like in her suit as far as like she's an attorney. She's a respected person. If I see her no makeup, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. But anyways, someone really fucked up. And thankfully, they fuck with the wrong person because she is actually a lawyer. High powered. But does she want to spend any more time here? Probably not. If I it was her, I would just be like, fuck you guys. I'm out of here. Like, I don't even want. I don't even need to see justice. I'm just never going to come back. That's a monster suit. I don't know how you fucked that up. Yeah. Man. So if she's trying to get money, which I hope she does, that I she should probably keep going with it. But hmm. I don't know. Anyways. Anywho, uh, we'll get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? We shall. Um, this is going to go out to Mark Bolin. You know, we talked about it. He's, he uh, was the one who formed... The singer-songwriter who, who formed T-Rex. Yeah. Um, the band was initially called Tyrannosaurus Rex, obviously. Obviously. And then they shortened that to T-Rex um, and released four psychedelic folk albums. So that's the, that's the genre they're calling this. I like that. I mean, that, th- that makes sense to me. Yeah. Right? Um, but uh, uh, from 70 to 73, it says T-Rex... Um, had popularity comparable to that of the Beatles with a run of 11. Oh, wow. Well, here's the thing 11 singles in the UK top 10. They scored four number one hits Hot Love, Get It On, Telegram Sam, and Metal Guru. Um, and then in 71, they, they had a, a, an album called Electric Warrior, a critical acclaim pioneer in glam rock. So, yeah, like when I said Bowie ish, that's, that's very in line with that. Um, but, uh, the, in 1977, Boland died in a car crash oh. seven, several months after the, the final studio album was released. So shit, that's wild. Um, but yeah, it looks like it's four dudes. Yeah. Bill Legend, Mickey Finn, Mark Boland, and Steve Curry. So, eh. I think you've had different members over the years though, right? I don't know. Because if you go to Wikipedia and go to members, there's like so many. So I wonder like. Oh, you're right. You're right. Because of yeah, 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 how yeah. they like, I don't know. Not sure. Not sure. But uh, fascinating. And they're in. They're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So you usually have to perform when you're there. I wonder what they're going to. Well, they must have someone else as the singer now. It was when that they. I would imagine. But this, if, if you're going this when far back die? in time. 77? Yeah, so he must. They must have a new one because Billy Elliot was way after that, uh-huh. and again they did all original songs and yeah, original. Yeah. So um, they must have acdc would that shit. Maybe to where Maybe. you don't even think about the first one. Either way, let's. Um, I I actually remember the scene now that it was the scene where uh, FDR is um, flying through the air with Abraham Lincoln um, in a dream sequence, and he's he's still in the wheelchair. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he smokes weed with Abraham Lincoln and uh, gets teleported into uh, a dream sequence with Abraham Lincoln flying all over the city of Washington. I love it. And it's really, really funny. And that's where that song is at. Spaceball Ricochet. As a matter of fact, let's play it. Uh, can we play it out? Do you mind? Oh, yeah. That'd all be right, great. Cool. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Here is Spaceball Ricochet by T-Rex. Congratulations on getting in the 2020 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You deserve. You deserve. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> We'll